Good. So now it's time for the next presentation, Linnea and Georgia. You will present your thesis. The same goes as for the previous presentation, but uh, there are some new uh, guests here uh, for this presentation. So I would just like to say welcome uh, to the Challenge Lab. We've had one presentation this morning, and now we're into the second out of five presentations today. Uh, the presentation is about 25 to 30 minutes. So I'll let you know when there's five minutes left. And then we will have 10 minutes of opposition, and at the end, 15 minutes of questions where the audience can uh, ask questions. But, uh, <laughs> so, the stage is yours. Yes. Then, uh, first, I would like to welcome you all to this presentation. I'm really happy to see many of you here, and we are all happy, we we're both happy to look around and see, oh, it's family, and it's friends, and it's interested people so thank you for being here um, we will talk about unlocking the transformative potential of agenda 2030 and uh, my name is Linnea and my I'm name is Georgia. Georgia so I will start by telling a short story about an agenda 2030 do you see over there too yeah agenda 2030 is a document that was presented by the UN in 2015. The full name of it is Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it was an agenda that was presented and created by millions of people involving in what do we want our world to look like and how should we transform it to get there. It was signed by 193 country leaders who said that yes this is what we want to do until 2030 this is how we want to transform our world so what is this agenda 2030 which we will speak a lot about maybe the thing that it's most known for are the sustainable development goals or the global goals that might be called or the sdgs which we probably will say it's 17 of, uh, 17 of them, talking about no poverty, partnership for the goals, life on land, a lot of different things. Following these are also 169 targets to measure these and 230 indicators to see are we progressing in the right direction. But the Agenda 2030 is not only consisting of these 17 goals, although that might be what is most known for. It is also talking about, well, who should do it, and how should we do it, why do we do it, and what is it really that we should do. It says that we need to change our world, we need to transform, and we need to do something different if we should continue to live on this planet. We need to do it together, we need to involve every person <coughs> everywhere in the world. And we need to do it by addressing the 17 goals as examples as somewhere to start. And in this agenda, there are some keywords that are returning and coming back and which are needed to understand what is really the agenda about. And the first one is universal. It is universal. It says the agenda is not achieved until every country on the earth has achieved these goals. And it cannot be achieved without every person contributing to it. It's universal and it speaks to everyone. It's <coughs> indivisible and integrated, which means that these 17 goals cannot be seen one by one because they're all affecting each other. So by doing one or addressing one of the goals, it will have impact on the other ones. When doing things in one area of environmental sustainability, it will have social consequences, it will have economic consequences, and you need to consider all those sides. And you cannot separate them because it's one world that we're living in. And lastly, it's meant to be transformative. It's meant to change the world. And it's meant to transform our world 
into something that is not right now. So this is the Agenda 2030 that we are looking at. So how do we unlock the transformative potential to reach there? When we started our thesis, we started with something called phase one, which was speaking to stakeholders in the West Sweden region of what challenges do they see related to sustainability? And we saw that this Agenda 2030, it was an interest, uh, interest in it, but how do you work with it? Where do you start? How do you do it? There was people saw potential, but also a lot of question marks. Additionally, we saw that people had figured out that we need collaboration to get to sustainability. But how do we do this collaboration? And who should we collaborate with? And how do we do this together? And that's the foundation for our research question, which is how might the transformative potential of Agenda 2030 be unlocked in multi-stakeholder environments? Because we need to do that together. And to do that, uh, we answer these two questions. And we were talking to actors in the West Sweden region to see what are the attitudes to get, uh, towards the agenda and towards transformation. And we're also looking at documents to see uh, how is the agenda recommended to be acted upon. And this is our process, our general process. We collect the data, we analyze it, and we wanted to create a set of recommendations. But that's too detailed. So in general, we have these five phases. The preparation phase, which I just mentioned, we collect the data, we generate the recommenda recommendations, we test them and then finalize them. And this is the outline of this presentation. So our first research question is, what are the elements that can be found that can support or suppress transformation? In other words, um, what are the tools, the processes, the actions, <coughs> the concepts that are out there that people use or people recommend others to use in order to engage with the agenda in a transformative manner. And to answer that question, we uh, collected data from interviews, you can see at the top, and documents as well, and analyze that data. And to know what in that body of data that we collected is transformative, we created an analytical framework that we call the transformation lens. So the transformation lens is based on the one hand on literature studies that explain what is transformative engagement. On the other hand, it's based on what the UN describes as transformative engagement, specifically with the Agenda 2030. What the literature says is that transformation can neither be designed nor engineered. However, it can be influenced. And by that, uh, we mean, for example, it can be initiated, it can be guided, or it can be accelerated. And what the transformation then is, it is a set of questions, 11 questions, so I will not go through them, but they fall under these three categories. So, for example, when we talk about initiate, um, it's about what kind of vision do we need to have and what kind of strategies do we need to reach that vision. When we talk about guiding, it's about the learning, the experimenting, the collaboration that needs to be there in order to reach that vision. And when we talk about accelerate, it's about how we challenge the current system that we have to leave space for the new uh, sustainable system and allow that system, the new one, to exist. So as I said, we started with interviews. So we conducted 18 interviews from, with people from 10 different organizations. And then we analyzed that by thematic uh, analysis and created thematic maps. An example is shown there to um, look at the data. And we also looked at um, several different documents from four different organizations and extracted what do they recommend to do if you want to engage with the agenda. And uh, we extracted that data. And we then um, used the transformation list to see, OK, well, within all of this that we extracted, what is supporting transformation and what is suppressing it? Um, the organizations that we chose are, have a focus, either a local one or a national one, and they also come from the industry, from research and the public sector as well. So we covered that broad spectrum. So what did we find? I guess you're quite curious, I hope so at least. <laughs> from the current engagement, how do people engage? We found three main groups. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive, but it's rather a continuum between them. <coughs> the first group is 
what we call backwards confirmation. And the, the main elements is that first an action is initiated, and then you look at it through some kind of um, framework, th through some kind of lens to see, okay, is this good or not? And then you decide, should we continue with it, should we adjust it, or should we just uh, leave it be? One example of these is that for now we only engage with SDGs on the level, which ones do we contribute to, to write it in a sustainability report? Or that we plan to use SDGs to screen projects at the beginning, then when the project is an idea. And if the project relates to, say, three SDGs, then we go ahead. If not, <coughs> we drop it. And this kind of uh, engagement is not very transformative, since it's not really questioning the practices. It's more having the business as usual, but maybe with a twist. The second type is what we call forward guiding. You do the opposite. You start by having a vision. This is where we want to be. This is what we want the world to look like. What do we need to do to get there? And we found examples of this also, also with new initiatives and new companies. To have this kind of thoughts when they, uh, with them as they start is very important. Not to have a business idea and then try to add on sustainability, but rather using the goals and sustainability as a driver to ask how can we as a company or organization contribute to sustainable development? This is much more transformative because it's questioning. You have the, uh, the vision that Georgia spoke about in Transformation Lens. You have somewhere we, we want to go and then see what do we do to get there? However, this one was only described by scholars as this is what it should look like. And we didn't identify it in any organization. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but we didn't encounter it. Although we saw some traces along that way. The third one is what we call consult and educate. And it's organizations and actors to say that our role is to educate others and help others engage. And this one, if it's transformative or not, it really depends on what is it that you recommend. Do you recommend the forward guiding or do you recommend the backwards confirmation? When we looked at attitudes, what do people think about the agenda and <coughs> transformation? Some elements is this, that the goals opened up for discussions across borders. It was something to talk about, a common topic. The Agenda 2030 and the SDGs was a platform to say, hey, we want to do the same thing. Should we do it together? And in that way, you could speak to actors that you're normally not used to. So you could come initiate a conversation based on the agenda. The second one is that what we do here affects the possibility to reach the goals globally. You can see that the agenda was helping to, to highlight that local actions and global consequences are linked, or that actions within goal eight has effect on goal six because they're linked together or that social uh, sustainability is affected by economic sustainability. But there was also a problem with awareness. What do people know about the agenda? Do they know about this transformative keyword? Many people know about the goals but not necessarily about the rest container, the agenda, and that is meant to be transformative. So there is lack of engagement in that way due to lack of awareness. And also, we see that people might not be ready to change. That resistance to change or fear of change and fear of the unknown is a barrier that needs to be mitigated to see this transformation happen. So, as we said before, we also looked at existing recommendations in documents. And what I will present here is what some key findings on what we found within those recommendations to be uh, transformative. So, it is recommended um, to use the SDG and the Agenda 2030 as a vision, a shared vision, towards sustainability. In order to do that, organizations need to actually embed SDGs in all aspects of the organization, meaning, for example, the structure, the strategies, the operations. There are suggestions of processes that can help you achieve this goal, and two things that they have in common is how to start with. So start by setting priorities. 
where do you want to put your strength, your focus, uh, which SDGs, which areas, but also understand how do you currently contribute to the agenda with what you're doing now. There's talk about learning by reflecting, rethinking and reshaping. That refers to your actions, your role within the organisation, the role of the organisation, your relationship with your partners. There's talk about collaborating with other actors, actors that are outside your own um, industry, for example, in a multi-stakeholder environment. And there's uh, talk about the need to reevaluate the focus on short-term gain and think about, well, is this what we really want or is there something uh, bigger that we need to be doing? What we found to be missing is experimentation and experimentation in the sense of creating some kind of framework where you can have um, the ability to learn, where you can make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And that was missing from the recommendations. That is something that is highlighted in the <coughs> theory of transformational theory and in the transformational lens, which is why I mentioned it. So we had all this big amount of data coming from the interviews and from the documents. What do we do with all this and how do we put them together? So we did that by comparing and contrasting what we extracted from interviews and documents and putting that in the framework of the transformational lens. So when it comes to visions and uh, towards sustainability and strategies to reach it, those of you that were here in the introduction, you have already seen this, uh, Think Big, Start Small, Act Now is a way to summarize what we find. Think Big is referring to have the agenda 2030 as your vision for sustainability, where you're going to. Start small is referring to, okay, where do I start from? Start by prioritizing uh, SDGs, where do you want to focus? But have that bigger vision in mind, that's where you want to go. Act now is referring to um, trying to gain, to, to take those low hanging fruits. So take the gains that you can easily reach to help you in that long path towards the vision. It's also about understanding what are you doing now, where are you now, how are you contributing now. When it comes to learning, experimentation and collaboration, then uh, we see this uh, loop that we call a collaborative learning loop. So if we start from the top, that is about reflecting, and it's about reflecting on your current state. What is your role? Where are you? What are your relationships? Where do you want to go? It's about rethinking in the sense that, okay, but this is where I am now, but are there possibilities, are there opportunities that I can do more to contribute towards the agenda? And then using the reflecting and the rethinking to reshape what you're actually doing, your decisions and your actions. And finally, experimentation. Okay, I have made some, ide I have some ideas about how I want to reshape my decisions and actions, but what is actually working, what is needed more? Um, uh, and all that is then feeding back into the reflection to continue towards this bigger vision. And there is an understanding both from interviews and from documents that this has to be done in a multi-stakeholder environment, where Dina has already mentioned that, but what is missing is in what framework can this be done? What is the framework that is needed to support this? And there we take inspiration from the literature where we see that what is very important, and this has been talked about before again, uh, is trust and openness and having this common purpose. And finally, accelerate. So challenge the current system. What interviews and documents talk about uh, is to challenge the current social structures. And that means for businesses, for example, to try and find new ways of measuring performance, not just looking at the profit, but looking at what value do I bring to the socio-environmental uh, system? What value do I bring to the society? What value do I bring to the environment? It's also about the costs and gains that I am creating in the system, not just the ones that are directly linked to my company or to my business or to my organization. And then for power structures, it's about um, thinking beyond the current government, beyond the current policies, beyond the current party politics and about how to gain power now, but about the future. So we've talked about many things uh, about what could the future look like, um, 
in the, at the sustainable future in the context of the agenda, what do we take with us to create the recommendations that uh, somebody could use, somebody that wants to engage with the agenda transformatively? So that can be summarized in these few words. It's about collaboration in a multi-stakeholder environment that supports trust. It's about engagement with a shared vision of sustainability. It's about awareness of where I am now and where I'm going. It's about having a wide perspective of long-term thinking and systems thinking. And it's about reflection and learning. And this is what we took with us from the next step. So before I speak about the recommendations, I will tell a little story of an insight that we gained during our, uh, our thesis work, and which we think is a key to working with Agenda 2030 in a transformative way. And that is, when we started, we spoke about the Sustainable Development Goals. How can we work with Sustainable Development Goals to transform society? But after reading more, we realized that, wait, what? This whole container that is around the goals are just as important as the actual goals themselves. Because you need to have that to see why are we doing this? And who should do it? And how should it happen? The SDGs are not alone, or not, uh, not enough. But the SDGs are kind of stories that are telling that this is what you could do. This is where you could intervene. And these areas, example areas of things where you could do something. So it's examples of how you can go further. But the story of why is in the agenda. And we had a workshop with a group of people from Johanna Bay Science Park, and some of you are here today. And we saw the same or similar transformation happen during this workshop, because when they came, the conversation was on the SDGs. How do we work with the SDGs here? Um, and especially, we have some favorites that we often work with. How do we work with these? Can we work with some more? But as the workshop proceeded, we could hear the difference in the conversation, how it expanded from only the SDGs to, well, what are we doing to the world? And what are we doing to contribute to sustainable development in big? And that transformed the conversation of, well, we have to do things differently. We have to rethink what we're actually doing. And I would like to hear your experience of it afterwards. Uh, but that is what we, what we saw happen and realize that this is an essence of what needs to happen in this, um, to do this transformatively. And that is um, one of the things that we, we, that we brought from that workshop, that this is actually essential and this is important. And that kind of confirmed an idea that we had before. So the recommendations, what do we recommend? I will present three groups of recommendations based on the words that we have used all the time. Initiate means to prepare for engagement because you cannot just, just engage, you need to prepare a bit. And there are three groups, increase knowledge and awareness, reflect on contributions and develop strategies. And some examples of how you can do it is increase knowledge and awareness is, for example, make sure that you read the agenda and see what is actually said. What are the goals talking about? What are the targets talking about? But what is the whole vision that is presented in the agenda? But also talk about the agenda and the goals in forums to spread it, to help more people know about it. Because as it is now, the awareness in society is a bit too low about it. So we need to speak about it. <coughs> Reflect on the contributions. It is what Georgia said, what are you already doing that is in line with the agenda? And what is your thing to do? What is it that you want to change? What are your priorities? And what are the first steps that you could do? To develop strategies, when you have a vision, this is where we want to go. How do we get this into our operations? Can we set up um, indicators to measure the process, the progress, to make sure we're going in the right direction and not just in any direction? How do we re-evaluate re those indicators? Next is to guide, to make sure that you have an environment that is supporting this transformative engagement. There you need space for learning and experimenting, to evaluate your role in the system and to form partnerships and collaborations. 
And space for uh, learning and experimentation is, for example, how do you speak about failure? Is failure something that is a fail or is it a learning opportunity? Um, can you try things? Do you have time to try new things? Do you have resources that don't have exactly, it needs to get exactly here? Do you have any freedom? To evaluate your role in the system, how do you contribute to the system? What is your relationship to people around you? How do you contribute to society? Uh, are you helping others? Are you enabling others to work in a sustainable way? Or are you preventing them from doing it? Um, and to form partnerships and collaboration. Who can you work with? Who can you work with that you haven't worked with before? Who can you work with in a different way? Do you look at others as competitors? Or do you look at them as potential collaborators? Do you build together or do you protect yourself? And to accelerate, to challenge the current system and to assist change, to make sure that this, trans this transformation is spreading and to make it transform the society. And you need to transform or to challenge the current system. It could, for example, be when you are going to trade with someone, how do you measure value? Are you only interested in the sum of money? Or do you also ask, well, what do you do to your society? What impact do you have on the environment? So you can put peer pressure on others and in that way help others or uh, encourage others to do things differently. And assist change. As we said, one of the challenges of transformation is the fear of change. So how do you overcome that fear of change? Um, some things that you can do is to make sure it's inclusive. The people that are going to be affected by the change, are they included in the conversation? Or will, will they just be, here, yeah, do this? Or do they have a say in it? You can speak about the why. Why do you do things? Do you have the same why as you have, or as you have, or as you have? What are the whys that are in the room? How do you address those? And also, importantly, let it take time. Transformation is not something that happens like that. It is a transformation. We heard a very good quote, very suitable quote, that it doesn't matter when you're pregnant, it doesn't matter how much resources I would give to Georgia, it would still take nine months. <laughs> and it's the same with transformation. You need to let it take time. So that is a summary of the recommendations that we have come up with. And these, they're not all covering, but our hope is that these recommendations can be used to initiate something different, to inspire to do something in a different way. And that was all for us. And if you are interested in knowing more, then we wrote our email addresses there. And for you, uh, we have been interacting with before, we will send you our thesis when it's done. And anyone else, if you're interested in knowing more, then just feel free to contact us. But thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Let's go directly to the opposition, uh, which is Alison Sonner. And uh, you can stand over there. I was told by our uh, uh, tech uh, area uh, over there that you're supposed to stand here. Otherwise, you won't be uh, vis visible uh, online. <laughs> so, let's go. Um, so, as Andreas has briefly said, I'm Alison Sarr, and we are posing Georgia and Linnea. Um, thank you very much for a really good presentation, and I hope that we can aspire to having a similarly slick delivery tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure that John is a little bit um, intimidated by the, the high standard of Agenda 2030 <laughs> explanation in a very short space of time. That was very impressive. Um, we were both really impressed by your report as well, and we think that um, considering all the different topics that were covered, um, in Challenge Lab this year. Yours was arguably one of the trickier ones because it was kind of not tangible. You weren't sort of aiming a specific solution at a specific person. Um, so it was really interesting and I think you did a really good job um, of engaging people who have clearly taken quite genuine interest in something that maybe doesn't 
directly deliver it an obvious benefit to them. Uh, yeah, so really well done. <laughs> and I think part of why you made an abstract topic so well, I think, is because you had a very logical method, was what I felt when I was reading through it, and you also presented that very well in the report. So I felt that I knew what, what was happening throughout the entire report, which was, which was very, very nice. And I particularly liked your transformation lens because you always referred back to that uh, and explained it very well in the beginning so you knew what you were doing. And you had a good use of references uh, to interviews throughout the report, report. And I also think you have a good way of uh, finding literature because you have like a list of criteria, which I enjoyed a lot. Uh, and you also used a good use of tables of visual representations, which I think, which I think also showed in your presentation. Uh, and you also had very uh, <coughs> cross comparison between different tools and reports, and that's not an easy task. Uh, so well done. And with that, I also found it very interesting what you said about the SDGs and kind of zooming out to the entire agenda, because I felt a bit like maybe the SDGs are made for uh, simplifying the agenda, but maybe in a way they're hindering you from seeing the big picture. Uh, so that kind of leads into our first question, which is uh, the 2030 agenda <coughs> was created by government worldwide, uh, presumably without them having consulted all organizations. And how then could you encourage organizations to adhere to something which they haven't themselves agreed to? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you much for the praise and words, firstly. Um, we see that, or what we heard throughout the interviews, is that uh, there's a very positive view of the Agenda 2030. And that um, what people said, it's a platform that by, by adhering and by um, being influenced by the Agenda 2030, you could collaborate with people that you normally could not uh, collaborate with. So therefore, it's an igniter for collaborations, uh, and it's also um, someone said that it's kind of the first time the, world, the whole world has a united strategy. Um, so people feel like, well, this is something I want to contribute to because I understand it and I can see the value of it. Um, and that is hopefully, you cannot force someone to, to engage, but it seems like people are interested in engaging as they are, as the way the Agenda 2030 is presented. And by having this, massive millions conversation, um, it still addresses areas which most people find interesting. So everyone can feel like, okay, well, here I have my passion, then I can add on some other things to make it, to understand the bigger picture. Yeah. I would also add that there is an issue of um, what kind of regulations will be out there to uh, work as incentives and also um, for the business sector, how do the customers and the investors choose to use their money, for example, would be another uh, incentive. And your collaborators, do they engage with the agenda and do they put some restrictions on you engaging with the agenda? Um, you've spoken quite a lot about um, collaboration and trying to break out of silos, um, but then and there's obviously a lot of enthusiasm, but how, who owns a problem if you're trying to spread it across different silos? If you, yeah, mm -hmm. if you have any thoughts about that. Who owns a problem? That is a problem. Who <laughs> <laughs> owns a problem? And um, for example, if we look at uh, partnerships such as the electricity, there isn't a real, a clear, uh, um, understanding that I own this problem, but it's about co-creation and working together more. And of course, then it's up to the people to take that responsibility that is for them and not to push it to the other collaborators. But it's not about giving the responsibility to one person, it's about sharing that responsibility. I think that's kind of the end of Moving a bit to the next question as well, what is our, what would happen if a stakeholder with high interest in working with it have little power within the organization and vice versa? But I guess what you're saying is that if it's shared, 
That is what we, um, when we spoke about the low hanging fruits, because uh, well, one of the things within low hanging fruits, because even though you have low power within your organization, it doesn't mean that you're powerless. Um, one of the other topics that was spoken about in uh, during the interviews was leadership and the role of leadership. But leadership was very often, most of the time, referred to not as you are a former leader with dedicated power, but more leaders as people who dare to go a different way, who dare to do something different. So leaders in the role of role models. Uh, and that is something that does not prevent a person with low power within an organization. You can still be a role model. You can still see what can I do? Can I bring up the question in the meeting? Can I put some demand on someone else? Can I expect something? What can I do? Because there's something, there's always something you can do. And that what are the low hanging fruits that you can do that might lead to something bigger and something more later. We say it's more challenged then with people with high power and low interest. But there we hope that the peer pressure can come in. So if you have a company leader who says that no, sustainability is not my thing, I'm not working with it, then we hope that the society, the collaborative environment can put pressure on that person by saying that, well, if you want to trade with me, I require you to look at your environmental consequences of your actions or your social consequences of your actions or to report on how do you contribute to agenda because that might lead to that person being forced to rethink and to do things in a different way. Um, and in that way, encourage them to actually be interested or even though they're not interested, but to, to still take actions. And based on your <coughs> report and your presentation, it's obvious that it's obvious that Agenda 2030 has got quite a high profile at a political level. Um, but then amongst sort of the wider population, in general, people aren't that aware of it. Um, and I don't expect you to have any sort of exhaustive answer. But based on the interactions that you've had, um, why have you got any idea why that might be or how that could change? And you've got two minutes to. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that is missing that we haven't looked at is the civil society. So we don't actually have a good question, a good answer to that. But I assume that what is happening is that the the awareness is not going through to the civil society. So maybe not enough is done from uh, the other sectors to get to increase the awareness in that. Yeah. That is also criticism or one of the criticism on high levels because it's written in the agenda that the, the, the ones who are, or the governments, the na national governments are the ones who are responsible for uh, ensuring progress in their own countries by measuring progress. Uh, and in Sweden, for example, the, we have the Agenda 2030 delegation who has presented reports and suggestions on this is how you this is how we suggest the Swedish government to engage. But so far, the Swedish government has not really accepted those um, suggestions and not incorporated them in the, in the national strategies. So it's not yet on, from a political level of Sweden that this is what we're going to do. I know that John was in the government some week ago speaking about it. So it is slightly there, but it's not a political decision taken yet that Agenda 2030 is what we should strive for. And that also says something, of course, then you don't have the, the grassroots um, conversation as much if you don't have a political decision to do it. Um, so there are also those barriers. What is the government responsibility? Are the government taking the responsibility? But what, what can we do as civil actors? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That must be 10 okay, seconds yeah, of watch time. <laughs> <laughs> so the time, time is up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now we've got time for questions from, uh, from the audience. And you actually have a question for the audience as well. But uh, uh, let's go. Who would like to uh, uh, ask the first question? Perfect. Hi. Uh, 
thanks for that. Um, I have a question on your uh, recommendations. Um, do you see them as sort of a, a package deal, do them all at once, or do you see any like inherent um, prioritization or progression between them? Well, there is a progression in the sense that um, the way that is divided is what do you need to have in place before you start engaging? What do you need to think about mm. before? Um, and then what do you need to have along the way <coughs> to support you? And then what do, what do you actually do? So in that sense, yes. But it's uh, if you look at the actual recommendations and the things that you could do is not about doing them all or about, um, yeah, it's about working towards that. And the way our written recommendations are presented is that these are basically the high the headlines and on the each one of them we have a list of this is things that you could do so some suggestions of actions you could take within within them um, so it's not do all use them as a checklist mm -hmm. but we want to use it our hope is that it's inspiration of how can you think differently what is applicable to you to your organization because we also think that it's not possible to make a universal recommendation. This is how everyone should do it, because it's too uh, different the context and the situation of each organization. So it's more what maybe you have already done some things or thought about some things, while some other are applicable to you. So it's be inspired by, we hope. And it's by no means a comprehensive list. So it's ideas and suggestions. John has a question. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. I just wonder one thing, and that is you mentioned two logics. One that was not very transformative, and then was, that was more transformative. And then the first one was about action, and then see how that relates to, uh, relate to the, uh, the agenda, and the other was to start thinking in the beginning and have better the guidance for the process. And also guidance for selecting maybe the question that is totally around. And, and how is that second logic that you present as very important reflected in your, uh, your uh, suggestion here? Because it's not explicit uh, in, in, in the words. It could, I can read some of the integrated such a way, an action that could be integrated in such a way, action can be reflected in the so, so how, how is that? So what we're trying to stress in the recommendations is that you have you need to have Agenda 2030, you need to understand what the Agenda 2030 says, to understand that whole context, and you need to have that as your vision to go towards. But then when it comes to an organisation trying to do that, then that is not enough. You need to land on Earth and have some um, more concrete things like what can I actually do? Where do I start from? Otherwise, you might end up not engaging because you think, oh, but this is huge. Where do I start from? I don't know. So maybe that's uh, why. It is why. first increase in knowledge and awareness. That is thinking. Yes. Yes. So, uh, what are your. If you look at the back of things, what are your principles? What is your, what? Is, where do you want to reach? But then, have that, have that in mind the whole time, and try to embed that in everything that you do. Try to look at what you do through that lens. But at the same time, for people that want to engage, then you need to have something more concrete. You know, need to break that down into smaller steps. Good. Any more questions? Uh, see a question from over there. So what roles can students have in, in reaching agenda? <laughs> I, spontaneous, I think, since one of the things that we saw as a main barrier is the awareness. And in that way, to 
seeing yourself, do you know about Agenda 2030? Do you know what is written? Do you know what SDGs are? And to see, do you speak about them in any sense? Do you use them in any sense? When you come to a job interview, do you ask about, do you have any sustainability strategy? Just by raising that question, it might be, oh, no, maybe should we do it? And if you have many students asking that question, then it might be that, oh, maybe we need to make a sustainability strategy because the students are asking for it, or the new employees are asking for it. Um, so that is one spontaneous way of just asking the question, raising the question in the forums which you are. And as a student, you're usually encountering quite many people and in that way, uh, like enabling that. Uh, and it also might be that can you can you help with the collaborations? Who are speaking to whom? The challenge lab here we have m help people to meet, and when we see that one of the super important things to to achieve the agenda is collaboration, like you did in your thesis, you brought people together and say that hey, we need to make a working group together. That's also in line with the agenda 2030 by enabling these collaborations. And also, I think maybe Anders can answer a question <laughs> better because um, in a more formal context, the SDSM is actually has an entire document recommending universities, which includes students, on how to engage with the agenda. And that is a network that is found here in the Nordic countries, but also around the world. Um, so they recommend doing workshops to raise awareness and all sorts of activities in the process to engage with the SDG in the context of the university. And Anders is sitting over there, so. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 Any other questions or uh, comments? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you for a very nice presentation, and I'm very impressed by your huge scope. Good <laughs> <laughs> job. Uh, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts about what's the next step. Have you thought about like how can you work with these powerful guidelines? How can you get them out there? Do you create a board game? Do you have to the organizations to do greater completion? Or how can you get it to you know, the next level? I think that our workshop was a good effort at get, getting people who are interested to work with to start to understand for themselves. Because it's not about us telling others what you should be doing. In the same way that we were able to understand um, to go through this journey that Linnea explained of okay, the SDGs, the agenda, the, what is the transformation, what should we be doing in the same way others can do the same and that was confirmed by our workshop. And I think that sort of workshop uh, could be one way as well as um, sending out the documents to people. Yeah. Yeah. But a board game. <laughs> there are some people here that the design <laughs> Any other uh, questions or uh, or comments? I have a question. You had a question. I have a question. Do you participated in the workshop? Would any one of you want to share what has happened after the workshop? If you would like to. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Just ask them who you are. Yeah, I could tell you a little bit about that. Um, so at the, from from uh, Johanna Bertrand Park, we were part of this workshop. Um, a lot of people were very happy with it, um, and some people weren't there. I guess that's the sort of kind of kind of the why that some people were. Um, so we have these uh, these weekly meetings. Old weekly meeting. Um, <laughs> and from now on, or from, from soon on, um, we're going to highlight two SDGs each. Um, and we've divided them so that everyone has to sort of study up on one of them and present to the rest of the group. So I guess that's going for increased knowledge and awareness. Great stuff for that. Yeah. Um, and then for uh, for for the new project to start, we have to do a uh, backwards confirmation <laughs> on them to sort of at least figure out um, uh, which SDGs they are relating to. 
positively. Uh, and I think we've really set a way of sort of assessing whether or not we're, we're, we're hindering open the, the progression of our nail. We have looked into that, I think. I hope. Um, well, we haven't really, we haven't really set up the use of that. So that's, I guess, what, what my contribution, I suppose. Um, yeah, but now the discussion is there, basically. Any other additions to that? Yeah. No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any final questions before we uh, move to uh, the next break? No? Then I'd like to say thank you very much. So uh, now it's time for the next coffee break, and they uh, put it uh, in the right place. That's good. Uh, there's uh, coffee and cakes. There should be enough for all. And there are also some uh, sandwiches left from the earlier break. So uh, help yourself. We start back here in uh, 11 minutes. I'm going to let you know when that is.